Hello everyone, Amir Harani here. Carrie Bonnell asked me to do a little bit of a video on how I run my p-learning page and kind of how I'm going to be organizing my guys for the next few weeks. Now, I am an engineering elective, so the way that I run my p-learning page uh, and kind of do some of my assignments might not help everyone. Uh, but I figured if I'm able to just show some people maybe some of the things that I do and that will be able to help them uh, maybe just know some of the tools that p-learning offers uh, or to be able to see how some other teachers are going about things uh, that might be helpful. So once again I'm sorry if this isn't the solution that you need exactly but hopefully this can uh, help you just understand maybe some of the tools and resources that p-learning offers. Right off the bat uh, I'm going to be sending a lesson plan to my students for just about every day. Uh, I tried to be as clear as possible on what they're going to have to, like what's the learning objective, procedures, what materials are they going to need, what's due today, what's going to be due later, uh, and then some notes on upcoming material and assignments. Uh, one thing that I know a few teachers have asked me already that I think is really helpful is if you go to manage class, edit roster, and at this point you kind of want to Make sure you go through your roster. Make sure everyone who is in there needs to be in there. Um, so make sure you have your whole class. If you drop down here and you say email roster, you're actually able to email the students straight from P-Learning. Not only the students, but you're also able to email the parents on P-Learning. Uh, so if you click all students and all parents, or if you just click everyone, it'll send everyone that email. Anything that you send out to your class, the parents can also be copied on it if you want to help the, hold the students a little bit more accountable uh, and, and put their parents on their assignments. So what I already did this week was, all right, they know, they know all of their assignments for the week. I made this an attachment. I uploaded that and sent that to, to students and parents so that they know here's expectations for, for week one while we're doing this online, online classwork. Uh, a little bit more in terms of just P learning. If you take a look at my page here, I kind of organize things from top to bottom. Top is already some of the stuff we've already touched on in mechanical engineering. As you go through, this is just how we're going to progress through the few few weeks, um, getting deeper and deeper into the content. Most of the pages that I have here to the left. Uh, if they're unpublished, it's just stuff that I don't use or I used in the past. Anything that's published is what the kids are going to need to use. Uh, so engineering TED Talk discussion, computer science is already a section that we went over, mechanical engineering and capstone. So we're going to stay primarily in mechanical engineering uh, because that's the section that we're on right now. Uh, to give you a little bit of an understanding of uh, some of the kind of the tricks that I have here, I always make sure anytime I have like content and I know I'm going to do a discussion or I have worksheets and I know I'm going to have turn-ins. I try to just organize it so it's right next to each other. If this is the link that they're going to need for to do the discussion board or the assignment, then the discussion will be right under it. A lot of the times guys just get confused trying to locate where everything is and this this I think in my opinion helps helps a lot. If we take a look at the different types of content blocks, and especially so you want to go to the content tab right here, there's a few different content blocks that you can use. On-page text, files, uh, YouTube, and web links are kind of what I use the most. Uh, I think that they're, they're the easiest to use, to be honest, uh, and it, makes, it just kind of makes the page work a lot better in terms of content, uh, in, in my opinion. You can also post up activities. Uh, in terms of messages and activities, I usually do discussion boards and assignments. Some people will do assessments online. I do that a little bit different, uh, but assignments and discussions are what I primarily use. I try to make sure that I'm uploading any essential content that the guys will need. We have a PowerPoint that we went over already for mechanical engineering. I usually put up two different formats of that because some guys will say, oh, PPT doesn't work on my iPad, PPTX does. Uh, it's kind of up in the air for, for whatever format will work for whatever student. But as long as I have two, these two formats, I usually don't have any complaints. Anytime that there's a PDF or something that's essential for them to use in class, uh, orthographic graphing paper, isometric graphing paper, right now they're, be, they're gonna be doing drawings, so they're gonna need copies of that. All that they have to do, it really is simple, they just click it, it immediately downloads the PDF for them, and then they have that graphing paper, whatever, whatever uh, you upload there. If you take a look, I also do some of these assignments. 
so I do I add in a content block and I add in uh, the content block that I would put for assignments is I use files and I just upload the assignment files and right below it I'll do the turn in so they've already done two and three so I'm waiting for them to do four five and six and same thing all they have to do is click the assignment for when it gets pulled up here's the details of what they have to do here's the worksheet you go back to the page once they complete it and there's kind of two ways that they can complete it in my mind they either do it digitally in some of in some form of like a PDF editor or using Word or they print it out and take a picture of it and upload it they could also maybe just email you the answers if, if it doesn't require any drawing or anything like that and they're able to turn it in right here and if you set up the turn in the right way they're always going to be able to submit it to you in multiple ways so let's take a look here we'll add a content block we'll add an assignment and we'll take a look at a few of those options we'll take a few we'll take a look at a few of those uh, options when you're creating an assignment to make sure that students are able to insert content in whatever way they're able to a lot of the times I tell them make sure that they're submitting it in terms of a PDF um, if they don't turn it in as a PDF they can take a picture and upload it in worst case scenario they they try to send me the answers uh, via email so just title the assignment if you use rubrics and p-learning you can do that usually I just put in a few lines of details here uh, if it's a turn in for a certain assignment I usually say like refer to this PDF and, and that's where the assignment is. You can pick a due date. Uh, so if you want something due on Friday, I usually say give them until 11.59 to do it. Uh, then the next day I know when I wake up, uh, if I wake up Saturday morning, okay, all of the assignments should be in. That's a cutoff with how hectic things are right now. I'm guessing that a lot of students will benefit greatly from having that option of okay here's a few more hours to turn in an assignment it is due Tuesday and you're gonna be hold accountable for it to be due on whatever day but you'll have until 1159 at night to do it if you click this block box allow students to submit work online that's pretty much saying if there's different types of files that you want them to be able to submit if you want them to submit a word document or a PDF or a PowerPoint that gives them the option to do it I usually do not check this box the reason I don't check this box is uh, if you are in your gradebook, you can no longer edit the points worth in your gradebook. You have to edit it on P-Learning. So I usually just make all of my assignments in my gradebook rather than uh, having P-Learning do it for me just because I think it's a little bit quicker the way I work. And then this just says, okay, on the, on the page, make sure that it's displayed. And if we click here, we click Save. Unfortunately, my students will have a new assignment coming up for them. Uh, they'll get alerts for this, so I'm sure they'll be a little scared, but it will just show up show up on the page. One thing that I do, like I said, anytime, anytime that you're trying to keep your page organized, you really can just drag and drop these blocks and put them wherever, wherever that you want. One thing that I uh, kind of did as well is if you go to manage page and page layout, you can kind of decide how your page looks. I use the traditional two, which means you have that larger center block and then the smaller strip on the right side. Um, but if, if there's something visually or something that would help you organize your page a little bit better, there are some options there. So I'm going to delete this out just because I don't want my students to turn in a fake assignment. Um, another thing, another thing that I do a lot is videos. I think that anytime the students have video tutorials, uh, it also kind of keeps a record from year to year what I'm showing the guys. Um, it's pretty easy. Go to add content block. We're going back to content um, and straight to a YouTube video. What you'll got to, what you have to do is pull up that YouTube page and up here at the top, you just copy this, copy this link, and then you throw it over in this box click embedded and it will actually embed that video straight onto your p-learning page you can give it a title so if you can see here it says ISO to ortho example video gives it a nice clear title of what it is it gives it a nice clear example of what it is uh, and then it will save it just like this on your page in case you want to do any TED talks in case you want to do any tor tutorial videos of yourself upload it on YouTube you're able to implement those directly into your page and it's pretty pretty quick and efficient to do the uh, the other 
and kind of the final thing that I was hoping to show everyone is how I do discussions. So I know I did upload a TED Talk video. W something that my class does every week is on Friday, we do an en engineering TED Talk video, and then they get the rest of the class to work on their capstone project. So I'll do the same thing that I did. I'll upload the YouTube video, I'll embed it, it gets set, put on the page, and then right below it, I'll create a discussion. Usually some pretty simple questions. Uh, I'm not expecting them to come out to like getting all of this information from the talk. I just kind of want to know what do they get from the talk? What do they feel from the talk? Uh, what you are able to do is if you go to add content, message and activities, and then go to discussion, there's a few options here uh, in case you want to run a discussion a little bit differently. So you can give it a title, put in a description here. Usually this is where I'm putting like, what is the discussion? What do you want them to discuss? Uh, what are the parameters of, of the, of, you know, of what you want them to be able to do? Then you have a few options down here. A class discussion, the entire class participates in the same discussion. A group discussion, you can customize groups uh, so you can have uh, students participating together or it's just uh, each student having a private discussion with you. You can go ahead and click next. Sometimes the loading can take a little bit. And then what you can see, there's a few options here as well. How long do you want the discussion board open for? Do you want it open for a week? Give them the whole week to be able to do the discussion. Do you want it for a day? Um, like I said, I usually choose 11.59 p.m. as my turn-in times uh, because then I know, okay, the next morning I'll wake up. All of the assignments should be able to be there. Another thing here that I think is a pretty useful tool is this required students to post before seeing others' posts. So if they have to, if you put up a video and you want them to uh, do a discussion or you want them to be able to say like, hey, what did you pull out of this video? What did you see out of this video? And you want to make sure that they're not just going through those posts and saying, oh, well, Johnny Titan said this. That kind of makes sense. I'm going to say that too. If you click that, it will say, okay, the student has to be able to post first before they're able to see other people's posts. Uh, and a lot of times in discussion boards, I don't do it too often, but in college when I had online classes, you could also say like, hey, respond to two other guys' posts, respond to three other guys' posts. Uh, and when you click this, it gives them that option first to think independently, and then you can respond to other people's posts and see what other people thought. Same thing here. I never, I never use this. I always make my assignments straight into, into Power Teacher. Uh, that way it's easier to edit. And then you just click Save. The discussion will show up on the page right up at the top, and you can move it anywhere you'd like. Like I said, my usual move is to move it right under the video, and then it keeps it clear, clear for the students. Uh, that's about all that I have for you in terms of how I run my p-learning page. Uh, I hope some of this was useful for you. If there's uh, anything in here that uh, was a good trick, hopefully it works out. Uh, thank you very much.